Kevin Cassius, IFL TV in association with MGM Marbella. We're at the new matchroom gym here uh, with me. I've got lightweight professional boxer. Looking a bit like Bronson. Yeah. <laughs> Not the original Bronson, but the other Bronson. It's good, we're basically we're in the gym training and me and JR and um Todd Good John we've got our beard so we're going and we're in the training so Why are you doing that? Just grab just do it, it's a laugh. Get a cushion in case you get it. Yeah, the chin, chin, yeah, it helps you. Is it? Of course it does. Is that a myth? It's a myth, yeah, of course it is. You get good and you go over, innit? You? <laughs> What's it like at the new gym? To be fair, it's buzzing, you know, it's full of fighters as we always are. Um everyone's buzzing and we're basically all getting ready for big shows, so everyone's happy now, everyone's working hard. It's my first week back in the gym this week, so I've been just I've just been getting all back in, a foam in the deep and doing four minute rounds. But you know it's good. I'm enjoying it. The boys are happy. The boys are all looking in good shape for the next big show, which is October 11th. It's, and it's fine. Just watching Joshua spar today, it looks unbelievable. So it's been good. October the 11th. Yep. At the O2. Yep. How come you run at the press conference over there? I pulled off the show. I pulled off the show. Oh, you pulled yeah. off that show? Yeah. I come in the training too too late. I'm coming to train too late, right. so basically they've put me on December the 6th it looks like now. Right, okay. Barry gave me a bottle well, to get back in the gym, get some back training. But like I said, originally you weren't meant to be Yeah, I was, yeah. I, was I did wonder that actually, yeah, before yeah. I, yeah. Pulled myself off the show, and um, bad word, bad bad meet with Barry, and he's giving me a bottle to get back in the gym, it was off training, back and I've gone. And here we are, ready for December the 6th, hopefully. Uh, the last few times I spoke to you, obviously, uh, you know, we spoke about, you know, you had the IBF, uh, Eliminator back on the Fox Groves on the card, yeah. which obviously won the fight, but the circumstances didn't work out well for you yep. regarding the, the, the weight on the day. Mm -hmm. um, that fight's obviously dead in the water now. It should be dead, it could be dead in the water. We've offered him double, apparently, we've offered him double his wages what he normally gets. So we've offered him a Mexico and still don't want to fight, so it shows you what the champions were about. Yeah. Miguel Vasquez done, wasn't it? Um, we're now going for another one, which is, sounds pretty good. Um, but I'm hoping if, if, if the thing, if, there's no point in me saying what, what, what we're going yet, but if they don't pull the route off, it looks like we're going that way. I'm just going to keep myself fit, keep fit, and keep training hard, and get ready for obviously whatever they fight me now, so keep active. Mm. Mm. As I understand, Vasquez is fighting Mickey Bay uh, yeah, next week. Yeah, 25 and one minute, one loss, isn't it? So, is that the record? That's in the Mayweather yeah. undercard next weekend, so. Yeah. I don't know what he's doing, I don't know what he's, um, Vasquez is doing. Apparently, I heard the whispers and rumours that he was going up a weight. And now he's fighting on a Mayweather show, whatever, whatever flows his boat, you know. He don't want to take on tough opposition, obviously. So. Mm. Did you happen to catch uh, Omar Figueroa, the other lightweight champion for the WBC against Yeah, I've Estrada. seen him. I didn't see the fight, I didn't get to see the fight, but I've heard of him, yeah. yeah. I've heard of him. Yeah, so yeah. it was an exciting fight in there. Uh, on the Kelbrook undercard, very exciting fight. Have yeah. Have a watch of that. There's a few, I think there's a few that um, we're looking at. I think, you know, I'll leave that to Tony and Eddie and what they, what they decide. I'll, I'll just fight. Young, in younger days, they used to like say, I want this one, I want that one, and they used to be chasing it, but I'll leave it to them. They know best. They, um, they'll pick me the right fight, and I'll just train hard and work for it and get ready to knock out whoever's in front of me. Is time running out for you for you to achieve your dream of becoming world champion? Most definitely. I want my last legs, and I'm surely. I've had, what, I've had 40 fights, 30 wins, 28, 29 knockouts now. I'm 29 years of age, nearly 30. This is my, my last This is my last shot, really, isn't it? Hmm. So that's the, that's the one I'm going, last shot. If I get it and win the World Title, perhaps got three or four more years left in the game. Just yeah. run some big money and then call it a day. But you're kind of like a make or break stage of your career, aren't you? Right now, yeah. I don't know that as well. Hmm. Yeah, that's what makes it more interesting. Is that what motivates you? Motivates me, it makes it more interesting for me. That's what I feel, yeah, it's motivation, I suppose. Yeah, it interests me, makes me, makes it more... I used to have time out, at, I had times out before, I had 15 months out before I fought Murray, and I said, who's you want to fight? I thought it was going to be a warm-up fight. Silly like that, and I said, I want... Rank number one, the world, I wanted John Murray. Everyone thought I was stupid. Time before that, I had 12 months out and I took on Prescott, I thought I was stupid again. You know, it interests me, this sort of fights interest me. Like this sort of time, my stage of my career now, I wouldn't say it if I didn't really believe it. I'm only ready now for a world title at this stage of my career. I'm only like mature enough, man enough to be ready for a big fight like that. I think all the times before, I just weren't quite, weren't quite there. When you turned professional, it was massive hopes for you, wasn't there? Yep. And you've had your opportunities. Looking yep. back on it now, um, obviously there was, there's been situations and circumstances within your life and, and career in general that yep. has probably made you not achieve your dream as you, you've always said. Yeah, I suppose things that happened in my family life and that held me back when I was about 25. I should have been champion years ago. I should probably should be made by now, but you know, things happen in people's careers and that's what makes a story of a fighter. Um, 
you can, I wouldn't change it for the world in my life. I feel like the way it's led is, is what it is. You know, I, I messed up when I was young. I had a few things on family wise. I made comebacks. I got beat for all the time. Wiki, who now trains with us, a good friend of mine. And I've made a comeback again and come back at a good level. And I knocked out a good kid in the last fight. But, you know, stories are people's lives. That's what make fighters. That's what make fighters. That's what, make fighters. That's what we are. The easiest thing for me to now do is go court a day and go and get a job. That's an easy option. That's my option. I want to get ready for big fights. You know, in here it's not easy. It's hard in here. Blood and guts, and 29, it's the job, you know, and don't get me wrong, I hold little niggles, little pains in my body, and that I've been training so many years, but I still strive through them, but sort of pains, that's what makes it, makes it exciting. If, um, if you retire without winning a world title, will you look back at your career and think that... Massive regret. Massive regret. hundred percent. Um, Tony and Rob, Rob McQuarton do that today, there's a the same day, like, if I don't win a world title, it's bloody... I'm a label that I don't. It said, like, I'm, I'm only the handed. I've got talent. I work hard. I've had a few ups and downs. As you just said, I've had a few ups and downs in my career. So I'll be back. But this time now, it's not going to happen. I'm mature now and I'm ready for it now. I'm working hard. I've been in the gym regular training, regular fights. I've had a few fights, I had a few comeback fights where it was at a low level. The last fight, I'd say, was probably the best opponent I've been in with. He's a very tricky opponent, very good school for fighter, very the hand, fast stands. I took him apart. But. I'm at the stage now, I'm ready for a big fight and a world title fight. I certainly hope so. Um, one of your former opponents, Michael Katsidis, is fighting Tommy Coyle yep. uh, in Hull, yep. uh, October the 25th. What do you make of that fight? I make it interesting. Michael's a good lad in his day. He's one of the top names in, in, in the lightweight division. A few people saying he's a shot fighter now. I think he's a shot fighter at the top level. But don't get me wrong, at, at, at the level he's mixing at now, he can still get away with it. I think he's, he's such a, um, he works hard, he's aggressive, he's a, he's a, he was heavy handed, I don't know if he still is heavy handed, and he works hard, he's, and he's, I know with Michael, I had a few good conversations with him over, over the years, he, he, he wouldn't be coming back now if he was going to mess around, I know, I know he's shot but, in his ways, but he's still ready for, he wants the language, you know what I mean, he's, tr he's trying for a pound, like, he needs his money, and what I can imagine is, that's an exciting fight. And I'll, I'll go, if you're asking me, I'll go and Michael can see this knockout, win by knockout. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Tommy Cole would be a great name for him to have on his uh, resume, wouldn't it? 100%. Tommy Cole to beat him would be a good resume for Tommy Cole. Yeah. But I, I see Tommy's fights, and I've seen him seen in some of his fights. I've seen him in drop by certain fighters that ain't big hitters in, in, in their own weight division, they're stepping up the weight division and still dropping Tommy. And you think, we're talking about Michael Cedis now, who's chin me. He had Neil Marquez out Sparco, he's been in some big fights, mega fights all over Vegas, and um, I just think he holds a big enough punch to basically get to Quell. The only thing is, if Quell uses his brain and don't go and play with him, and he basically keeps it to a fencing game, he might be able to nick it on points. Mm. That's if he, if he does that, but one of Tommy likes getting stuck in. Interesting. Lightweight is, yeah. division is interesting as it's always it been. And, uh... Yep. Let's see where you fit into it later on this year. Then. 100%. I think it'll be sooner, more well, soon. I think it'll be sometime in December. I'm hoping something big quite happened in December. So, yeah. Fine. Great ALS Ice Bucket Challenge with uh, Paige, by the way. Yeah, it was great. Probably, probably it? one of the best ones I've seen, if not the best one I've seen. Yeah, everyone says it's one of the best ones I've seen. And they said, he said to me, hit me on the chin. So he said, I'm going to nominate three of the best pals. Gary, then Gary, he nominated three absolute nutty names. And yeah, and I just chinned him. But he, he says, don't hit me too hard. So I've got to hit you hard. He's like 17 stone. So I've got to hit you hard to take me off the chair. He, yeah, but don't knock me out. So but what he didn't say, off the chair. Now he's gone off the chair. He's whacked his head on the floor. And then it, <laughs> all years, my, my son shout out, he's a mug. And then it cuts. But he hits his head off the floor. And he's on the floor holding his head like he's, Yeah, it's quite funny. <laughs> Have you been watching uh, Kelly Maloney and Ugly Harrison on Big Brother? Big fan of these, mate. Um, no, Kelly, well, I'd call him Frank. He's a good man, you know. When I knew him as, as a man in the boxing sport, I never had no, I never had no wrongs with him. I never had, I always got on with him as a person. The big thing that he's done, you know, he's got he's got a lovely family. I never met his daughters, but I met his wife once in Portugal, and his daughters are stuck by him. And he's a brave man for doing what he's doing. But I still don't quite know if it's a leg up. I don't think a lot of people know. I suppose only time will tell. Yeah, I suppose in three to six months' time, we'll we'll kind of know. Yeah. I mean, like. And it's still it, quite a funny thing. It's it most well probably is just a, a genuine thing and it's just a, a doubt in people's mind of... Yeah, you know. and he might be going for a funny time in life, you know, of what, of what he's doing or what, how yeah. he's thinking mentally and things. 
It might change within six months. I think the same for me. Who knows? All right. I hope he wins it, though. You reckon? I hope he does, yeah, he deserves it. He's a nice man. All right, well, listen, Kevin Mitchell, thanks for talking to uh, IFL TV. Yep. And uh, good to be in this new gym here. Might even pop down here and do a bit of training myself. You should do, everyone. Eddie's going to be this training, though. Is he? I've just booked him in for an half marathon, so he's all fucking fit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know all about that. Uh, all right, listen, we'll catch up with you soon, anyway. Cool, all right? Cool. Cassius, Kevin Mitchell, IFL TV, thank you very much. Thank you very much.